Well, first of all, how's Abu Dhabi? You're out of quarantine. What was that situation like for you? I was actually very, very it was done very well. You know, the, the people here at the W Hotel, they were very uh, hospitable to, to myself, my family. They done a lot of thoughtful things in the room. And then, you know, for my children and for myself and Dee. And, you know, we, we got through it. It's, it went pretty well, to be honest. It was nice just to unwind. And it's good to be here now to be free from, from uh, the quarantine and moving around. We put on the good clothes, you know, the way we do it. Dressed up the kids, let them run around the halls and also. Uh, it's very happy. What was it like? I mean, was it easier to be, you know, starting the weight cut while you're in a situation like that? Or does that make it even more challenging? You know, Megan, I put in a lot of work throughout this build-up to get myself down to a lightweight frame. There's not an issue with the weight at all. It's not even a weight cut. You know, I'm right there. And it's been quite, it's, it's been quite seamless. Now, not, I know it's, it's easy to say that after I'm after putting in all the work and the dedication and the commitment to it, but I'm right there. You know, it's, uh, this, is not even, uh, this is not even a wake-up for me. I'm very excited to get in and see myself at 155 and, perform, and perform at 155. Yeah, and we're obviously excited for it as well. You know, at 155, there's there's so many names. There's so much going on in the division. Mm -hmm. The same at 170 where we've seen you uh, compete a couple of times. So what was it about this rematch that really made you say, like, I want, to, I want it to be Dustin and I want it to be at lightweight? You know, I wanted competition, Megan. I was starving for a bit of competition. I got 40 seconds in the octagon, albeit the best 40 seconds in the, in, in, in the year. Um, I, wanted, I was looking for more. I didn't get it. You know, so much was going on with the world and whatnot. And, you know, I just had to, I was just tried on to get something. Dustin hit me up, I think. I don't know whether I hit, him, I hit him up or he hit me up, but we just engaged in something online and then it became a, a real thing. And I'm very happy with how it's played out. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody who saw the first one certainly is interested to see how this rematch plays out. And, you know, that one ended very early, but you're predicting an even earlier finish to this one. I mean, what is it about your preparation that makes you feel so confident in that? Yeah, it's just, it's just complete confidence in my preparation. I've put in the work. I know where I'm at. I know where I was at then and what I've done. And I know where I'm at now and what I will do. You know, I know Dustin's tough. He can take a smack. He can take a smack off other people. He can't take my smacks. So that's just the way it is. I, 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 I almost want to go against my own self. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I want the longer, I want, the, I want time in the octagon. It's always the case. You know what I mean? I want the time in the octagon. The last time I didn't get it. I want time in the octagon this time. I don't think I'm going to get it, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. You mentioned the last time. I mean, what do you learn from a performance like that that is less than a minute long against a guy like Cowboy Cerrone? I learn I am what I say I am, Megan. You know what I mean? Donald's a phenomenal fighter, a veteran. Um, and that's it. You know, when I prepare correctly and fully, there's not, a, there's, n there's not an iota of them close to me. You know, they're not even, they're not on my level. Why, why prepare in Portugal for this one? You know, obviously the world is in a crazy place. It's very quiet out there. There's no distraction. It's a small little town. I brought a team out. We made sure we were all tested and safe and got to work. And that was it. It was a great uh, camp. You know, and I've been in Dubai. Now. And then I came home to Ireland for a bit. It wasn't all in Portugal, but the good chunk of it was in, was in uh, Portugal. So it's been a phenomenal camp. Was that a place you had spent time before? Was that new yeah. for you for just this experience? Yeah, I actually prepared. I began the Max Holloway training. Uh, over in Portugal. I've been to that place many times. One of the founders of the McGregor Fast program has a gym out there. So that's where I, that's how I got to know uh, Colin, Colin Bourne. His name is, he has a phenomenal facility, Shinobi Lagos, it's called. And it's, it's a great place. So I've been there many times. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So a little bit of familiar familiarity yeah. for you. I can't even yeah. say that word. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> familiar. familiar. Yeah, we'll leave yeah. it. <laughs> it's fine. It's four, well, in the morning. It's four o'clock in the morning here. That's my excuse. <laughs> <There> you, <go. laughs> um, you know, I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Dustin's last performance, that fight against Dan Hooker. It was crazy five rounds. I mean, when you're watching it, what did you think of that performance? Like John Anik said, you know, John Anik is some boy, I will tell you. He, he goes, one of the best rounds of the year, unless you like defense. <laughs> he was literally, as I was saying to him, that John, John, some, John is an incredible asset to the company. And yeah. the summer he comes out was great. And, you know, it was a great fight. And 
unless you like defense. I'm a fan of the old defense. But you know, he showed his toughness. He showed, he, he took a good smack. He gave a good smack. Um, great fight. What do you think about um, the co-main event on your card, Chandler versus Hooker? Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I know the two lads know the magnitude of the position they're in. Uh, both got something to prove. Chandler coming over from a different uh, organization, you know, climbing up in, into a, in, into the into the premier organization, and then you know, Hooker looking to bounce back and. Two good fighters. They know what's at stake. It's only going to translate into a into a full on fight, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah, you know, I'm interested to hear your take on on that fight, Andrews, as well, in comparison to what Khabib had said about you know I'll come back if somebody really impresses me, specifically in those two fights. I mean, what did you take away from that announcement? You know, it wasn't an, an announcement. It was it was. It was a refusal. It's it's it was a no. It's a it's fear. He's not he's not interested in coming back. He's trying to you know he's gone. So I feel it was almost long playing it, and it is what it is. If you think the two lads in the co-main event are fighting for a spot at that, they're fight, They know everyone in the company knows what the real fight is, what the money fight is, what the main fight in the business on the entire planet is. So it is what it is. Let the let it be. Let, what it will be. I'm going to go in and do my thing and carry on. You know, you can only pull the wool over people's eyes for so long. You know, what's, what, what, watch what will be said after the fight. There'll be some other noise said after the fight. So yeah, the world will eventually come around and see what it is. You know what I mean? And that's it. Were you surprised that there maybe wasn't a title added to this bout after everything that had happened at 155? Not, not really, you know. Not really. After the, after the year with myself and Dane and what was going on, I don't think he was going to waltz me into a title shot, wasn't he? Not really. So that's no problem. I'll, I'll come back and I'll compete and I'll, get, I'll earn it. Uh, and that's it. Um, you know, the, the old Dana would have stripped, would have stripped the, the guy post-fight after, after an announcement like that. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Wh so what does the path to the belt look like for you this year? Just com com competition, Megan. Competitive bouts. You know, uh, I, I will begin training again two days after this bout and pick pick back up. You know what I mean? Carry back on. See what see what else is available. You know, the internet loves motivated Connor. I don't know if you see, you know, all of these things that people make, but they'll say like, "Motivated Connor will cook dinner better than you." It, you know, it's kind of fun. <laughs> nice. um, I get told motivated Connor would dress better than me or wear my outfits better than <laughs> me, do my job better than me. But, oh, <laughs> but, but that being said, you know, what really is the actual motivation for you? What made you kind of have this? I don't know if I can call it a new spark, but certainly a more visual spark for us. Mm. You know, I've always been motivated. I'm, I'm a self-motivated individual. I've gone through some things that have kind of, you know, I've, I've been forced to reevaluate myself and have those internal conversations. And that's it. I have a, an, a, an amazing fire that's burning inside of me to go in and perform, you know, for my fans, for the people that support me, for my team, you know, and to create highlights. That's what it's about. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, everything is belts, money, all of this comes and goes. The highlights live on. And that's it. I want to compete and perform and put on my highlights. And that's it. I love that. I mean, is the finishing highlight for Dustin maybe something we did see on Embedded? Lovely kick that was. Jumping yeah. through into a kick. Uh, and it was on the button of the temple. You know what I mean? That's a switcher. That will switch your lights for sure. For, for certain, those spinning attacks are, are prevalent in this belt. They were in the first belt. They will be in this belt. We're looking forward to that. Um, you know, something I, I want to touch on because I know both you and Dustin personally is this um, dedication to the Good Fight Foundation. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's something that is really important to you as well, even though it's his charity. And I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, you know, why that struck a chord with you and, and was something important for you to contribute to? I've, I've an immense amount of respect for Dustin for, you know, one, how we handled the loss and, and, and how we came back. And two, what he's doing, what him and his wife are doing with the Good Fight Foundation. I've been engaging in philanthropic efforts myself uh, the last while, and it's like, you know, I believe it's, it's every human's duty to give back. We've got to give back in this world. It's not, the main question should be, what are you doing to help others? That should be your main question on this planet. What are you doing for other people? And, you know, I have a lot of respect and admiration for what they're doing with the Good Fight Foundation. 
before it was going to be on, it was going to be just like a charity exhibition type of thing. And I was like, right, well, maybe the UFC won't be involved. We'll just do it somewhere and we'll build up for our charities. Then we can still, then eventually the UFC got on board and now we're going to do it under the UFC banner. But it's still the same thing, you know, I'm going to still support the foundation as I will support my foundations back home in Ireland. And it's going to be a good fight. You know, all of this, it's a mutual respect. It's, it's, it's the correct way of doing things. Make no mistake, though, it's still, a, it's still a fight. It's still a competitive, rootless fight. And, you know, I'm not going to hold back in here. That's for sure. Do you like the Southpaw versus Southpaw matchup? I love the Southpaw versus Southpaw matchup. I always match up well against Southpaws. Um, Dustin has multiple losses against Southpaws on his record also. So, you know, it might be a weakness of his, but I, I am flawless on a, uh, against Southpaws. As many shots in my arsenal that I can pull out. I know Dustin likes to switch stances as do I also. So it's going to be a good belt. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it in that regard. But I also, like, part of me really wants to see you guys grapple. I know that that sounds kind of wild considering what talented strikers you both are. But I just think it could be interesting. Does that, is that something you envision for this fight at all? Well, I, I, I'd love it. I'd love a tie up also. I'd love, you know, it's mixed martial arts. I'm here to perform in all, all the facets of the game. I feel Dustin may want to try and, you know, try and engage in the clinch. And that's no problem. Look what happened to Donald. You know what I mean? So... I'm ready for it, and I'm excited to showcase my skills all across the board. Yeah, and uh, I want to just get your thoughts on this Max Holloway boxing comment, because I know um, I, I saw a tweet where you just wrote LOL, and you certainly, like you just said, always want to showcase all of your skills. Is there part of you that wants to, to show people, hey, I'm the best boxer? Yeah, of course, of course. Now, I'll, I'll go in and knock Dustin out with a flying kick, or, or, or I'll, I'll catch him in a submission or something, and then the people will be like, I can't box. You know what I mean? That's the way the fans and the people operate around the, around the game. But Max had a good performance to an extent. I think it's a bit overblown, to be honest. I thought he was, you know, the marks on his face and the shot, the absorption of shots um, say otherwise to me. So, you know, Max had a great performance and he's up there for a rematch for sure. I would, yeah. I, I would have to embrace a rematch with Max. I was just, I was just going to ask you about that. I mean, because that fight was so long ago and you're both such different fighters. I mean, mm -hmm. is that something you can envision happening relatively soon? I would say so. It's certainly an option. There's many, there's many. I'm very happy with this situation because there's so many options on the table. Last year, it felt like there wasn't many options. You know what I mean? We had the rematch that we were all looking for and then it kind of like, it just, it was dodged and ran from, and you know, this time there's multiple options. So I'm very happy with that. You know, we've got, you've got many lightweights, lightweight contenders. You've got the co-main event fight. You've got Max at the putting himself into the mix. You've got Diaz, the talks of Diaz again, and at 155. You know, then you've also got the boxing escapades, which the talks are intensifying. Could be, could be the end of the end of, towards the end of the year. It could be, it could be next. It could be April. It could, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm going to weigh up all the options and see what's there. I mean, we saw Dana say that he expects you to fight three times this year. You expect that for yourself? Yeah, three to four. Three or four. Interesting. Uh, you know, I must compete, Megan. Come on now. I, they've been holding me back. It's like, let me go. Let me go, guys, here. This is a bit, like, I, I've been over 12 months out. Before that was what? Long again. You know what I mean? When I went on that featherweight run, I had like seven fights in a year and a half. So this is what I'm after. So if they can accommodate and oblige, I, I appreciate it. Listen, certainly no complaints from me. I know that we have to wrap this up, but I just want to get your thoughts briefly on making that walk with a limited scope of fans. Nothing like the last fight you had in January where the place was packed, there's celebrities in every seat. I mean, does that require an adjustment on your end or is that even maybe something you're looking forward to? No, it'd be just like being back on the prelims, you know, the patchy crowd. You know, when I walked into Sweden for my debut, it was a patchy crowd and I liked it. Uh, so I, w I was excited to get in with no crowd, for sure. I was eager to hear my power and velocity with no, sound, with no you know, crowd noise behind it. And then when I heard that we were in the Etihad Arena for this one instead of the marquee, I was thinking, lovely, it's going to be a real eerie arena and the echo is going to be beautiful. Now, a couple of thousand fans, for my power, it will still translate. So I'm excited to get in. There's no adjustments, though. I'm prepared. I, I can fight in front of one per no persons, one person, or one billion people. Yeah, so it is what it is. Yeah, well, lots of us will be watching, including myself. Connor, I appreciate your time. Good luck to you. Have fun. 
I'll see you at the next one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Megan. I appreciate you staying up uh, late for me and I will see you at the next one most certainly. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.